Well, welcome back into the Mid Norfolk Farmyard Garden. I'm going to give you an early morning tour. It's about half seven in the morning. We've just got the sun starting to break through from the east across the paddocks. Just catching this bank of hollyhocks that's grown on this west facing wall. And aren't they looking good still? We've had some fantastic flower off these this year. They've done really well this season. Look at the height on that top one. Must be approaching 10 feet. Still plenty of flower to come on that one. Beautiful looking. Under planting as well, still looking fresh. We've got quite a bit seeding in this border now. That has to be left. It's part of cottage gardening and a good excuse not to tidy up too quickly. Good load of aquilegia seedling coming on. Got some cow parsley seeds in here as well, still forming. Looks like it's going to be another hazy but warm day today. Sun just starting to clear the mist off the fields. Geese and chicks have been up for hours. These chicks are really starting to find their feet, and spending most of their time outside their run, which is what I really want for them to graze and free range over this paddock. Get such better colour in the eggs if they're getting some fresh grass. Lambs are being retained in the bottom field because we're about to re-top this if we can get the tractor cutting deck going again. She'll give a fresh flush hopefully if we get a bit of rain over the next couple of days. Bring this paddock back into go. Geese are in a real heavy molt at the moment. You can see all the feathers. They love these piles of wood chip both for the warmth that it gives them on cold nights, but also their mounds just give them that extra bit of vision over the pallet if anything's coming towards them. But let's go and have a look around the garden and see what else we've got flowering for you to see this morning. Just come round onto the other side of that wall with the hollyhocks. Just see above there the flowering shoot of that big one. Got a lovely little hosta flowering in here, which is a bit overwhelmed this year. Tightly grown, compact leaf, lovely loads of this very nice pale blue flower. I'm going to split this one next year because it is being overgrown by the other plants in and around it. The Japanese anemone particularly overshadowing it, but there's a big peony at the back there, which really is making it quite difficult for that one to get light. Got one of those lovely old fashioned. Rambling roses just coming up here and in the corner, which has been struggling for several years now, but just starting to get away, this young Albertine. Always one of the most beautiful roses when this does flower, but it's quite hard to get established, slow growing for us here in Norfolk. But in a couple of years time, I think when that clambers over the row wall, we should have a really good display on both sides here. My lemon trees have been sunning themselves quite nicely here on the edge of the old abandoned swimming pool and the geraniums out of the conservatory which is still being repaired starting to come back into flower they didn't like being brought out very much earlier in the season it was too cold and wet for them but now they're coming back into flower as we approach August this rose arch really we showed you this last week lovely old-fashioned Roses, combination of colours planted along here that give this absolutely spectacular wall of colour in late July and beginning of August. And this year, with the swimming pool being abandoned, we've just left the weeds to come up in the paving and just look what we've been rewarded with. Combination of all sorts of seeded annual and perennial plants that have just come up and are giving us this flower bank across what would otherwise be a sterile six foot of concrete pavers but these are just growing in between no water no feed and they're giving us splashes of color throughout the summer which is quite nice the rose arts extends up towards the far side of the garden with a similar planting earlier in the season we've had spring bulbs in here followed by primrose which you can just see still I'm going at the base, the, the, the rosettes of leaves, sorry, not the flowers, they're, they're well finished. And then following on from that, we've had a combination of oxide daisy, 
and now this beautiful white flower that's giving us this splash of colour. We've still left the oxeye in because we want that to seed back into the meadow so there's still a lot of older plant material in this border that's yet to be tidied away and we won't tidy that away until it's seeded. Into the corner here we've got the Bobby James Rose sits in front of the May Gold in the back that's now completely finished. This is a very dry area of the garden under these old trees. Still managed to grow a little button rose and this clematis which is coming up nicely but again struggling in these dry conditions they'd really prefer a much moister condition than that. Along the back border this was full of those bluebells earlier in the season now again being left to see before we tidy up but again parched dry usually in July and August this area of the garden and then along the back bank Rosa de Resch hasn't really done very much this year. It's struggled after a hard prune end of last season, but these plants grow so vigorously it really did need bringing back down. So it's just a light peppering of flower on these. Not an awful lot this year. Strantia, white variety in this area, doing nicely. These beautiful things been flowering now for about three or four weeks, just coming to its end. Is these beautiful tall spires of flower should really I think support this most years it's self-supporting but with a vigorous growth this year it's uh, a little leggy and could have done with a bit of extra support but it's given us this beautiful mauvey blue splash of large area of colour in this bit of the garden which at this time of year tends to be a bit green with not too much flower particularly when the roses have done their first flush. More Estrantia being allowed to seed here. Got the lovely dark red variety just at the back there, but it's done a little better this year because the buddleias were cut so hard back at the back this year. They'd overgrown these completely previously and not allowed enough light down to the base. And some daylily in this corner. We had to completely clear this patch earlier this month because a large lace hydrangea which was in the centre of this border had died. It gave us an opportunity to get in there. We've done quite a bit of weeding and cutting back. It's always a little unruly this back but it's the last bit to get cleared every season but Budley is about to start flowering. Beautiful dark red one this. We've got some wild honeysuckle just coming over the hedge fighting for the light with the bindweed which in that position will be allowed to flower. I also think it's undervalued. I know it's a complete pain once it gets into the garden but this time of year it's producing quite a bit of decent flower and nectar for the bees and this absolutely enormous rose in this position will flower on and off over the next few weeks continuously through into autumn. Coming down the back pass behind the orchard which is still a couple of weeks off being cut we're starting to pop a few paths through it but there's still some quite valuable nectar plants in this with these cow parsleys and giant hogweeds just look at the bugs on that how important keeping the nectar going in these areas for the wildlife is at this time of year in most gardens there tends to be a bit of a lull, particularly in early August in dry seasons. And there's not an awful lot of flower providing food, pollen and nectar for the, the bugs. So it's very important to let some of these later flowering wildflowers do their thing. It's my excuse for not being too tidy. It's a gardening style we love. This wilderness, cottagey overgrown look which you just then cut back later in the season. Coming through into the vegetable garden here at the back. More rambling roses, fever few. This beautiful rose overgrowing this arch. Which isn't as vigorous as it has been previously. This was a complete rose arch that's collapsed the top 
supports going across from there were only put back up later in the season because we had to have access through here earlier. The butterfly is still enjoying those roses as you can see. This one's just growing up a little pillar of hazel that we cut out of the woods. Coming down into the back vegetable garden. Again, I think this year the Rebecca's are going to do very well. This border tends to be, again, very dry and droughted most seasons, but this year, just look at the growth and height we've got on these. It's coming this autumn, really feel this border, which is planted for late summer colour, should come alive. A few daylilies in here. Again, the tansy growing up through quite like that, the way it self-supports itself. I always get a bit annoyed with tansy, it grows so tall and then collapses if it hasn't got that support. But that one's growing very nicely. And if we come back down into the vegetable garden. Most of the roses in here have now finished. My row of fever few that I transplanted to form a hedge along the front's done really, really well given us this beautiful effect for almost a month now. And behind it, my rather weedy looking vegetable garden, courgettes peppered in between the fever few and the poppies, which again are being left to seed. This beautiful self-seeded hollyhocks that have just given us this lovely spire of colour. We've had quite a few hollyhocks come up this year in the vegetable and fruit garden. And it's been all the better for it. If we just come across into the cutting garden, which we've been tidying up this week, just again, been taking out the oxide daisy, which has dominated in there over the last couple of months, just clearing it and starting to tidy things into a row. Got dahlias, which will come on later in there. Managed to get calendulas for the first time this year for ages. I don't know why, but I've just not been able to find calendula plants or seeds locally in Norfolk, which is a little strange because it's a very common cottage garden plant. But I'm hoping these are going to seed into this border now and we'll have them for years to come. They're all in all looking very pleasant. Despite us approaching August, we've still got plenty of flower in this cottage garden. Fruit's coming on nicely as well, though I don't think it's going to be a particularly fantastic year for apples and pears. Some trees have done really well, others have really struggled. But all in all, I'm pretty pleased with the way this garden stood up this year. Ready for a drop of rain now, I hope. Just to refresh it would be really good. So I hope you enjoyed this tour. Longer than usual, giving you a walk around the whole garden, which we've previously only really shown you in pieces.